Welcome back to Lit vs. Genre. I'm Steve. I'm Jeff. And we are moving on to Chapter 3 of Eye of the World. Robert Jordan making steady progress, Jeff. Steady progress through this. Oh, yes. you know? I know we got a ways to go. I know we got a, a long mm -hmm. journey, much like mm -hmm. maybe some of our characters here are going to have a long journey. But we're, we're doing it. We're, we're doing it. You actually do this. This whole book is set in Emmons Field. That's <laughs> we don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, then I, this is this is going to be longer than I thought. All right. <laughs> so here we are in chapter three. And did you want to mention this because it didn't show up on the video last time? But we do have one yeah. of these wheels. I didn't. Looking at it now, I didn't even realize there was a snake wrapped yeah. through the wheel. Was what was mm -hmm. happening there. Yeah, yeah. So you got that snake biting its own tail, and that infinity symbol, um, which could make you wonder, like, does that mean the Great Serpent Ring covers two fingers, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be the infinity symbol, mm -hmm. uh, or is it just a single ring uh, snake biting its own tail? I'm sure there uh, are some cosplayers who could let me know. Um, oh yeah, no, that I mean, you can you can buy <laughs> the the <laughs> ring for sure. But yeah, so these are the these are the symbols that I was talking about, and I think the the one we get for chapter one is the one we also get at the end of every chapter because it's like signifying the wheel of time, infinity, great serpent. Um, but then chapter two had the Ravens and then chapter three has this weird, like, what is it? You know what I mean? Like, is it, <laughs> is it, it's like uh, a cornucopia or something, right? Yeah. Like cornucopia is a, a sort of horn claw. You know, we, we don't know. Um, so I think it's interesting that there are some mysteries associated with uh, some later symbols. I'm super uh, eager to hear your reactions to, to this chapter because I feel there's a couple a uh, really mm, uh, crucial, interesting point. So yeah, what do you what do you, what do you got for oh, me? Oh Lord, I bet I miss oh, stuff. I bet I Bring miss it. stuff again. Let's see. Bring it. <laughs> She's like, oh no. Oh. Okay, so peddler rolls up. Sometimes right. taller than a person. Taller than are these wheels. <laughs> these wheels these are wheels. Tall, taller than a person. Uh, I mean, those are some big wheels, man. I don't. I don't know what oh, these. Yeah. I don't know if I have here. this cart in my in my brain. Like, I don't know if I've completely pictured it. Like, what exactly it looks like with person-sized wheels on it. Six six and a half foot tall wheels. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. Uh, all right, and it's gotta have just all the stuff on it. I think, yeah, yeah, I don't think I spent enough time kind of thinking in my mind. Wait, what does this actually look like? And now, <laughs> now you got me like really wondering, like, whoa, this is something out of like an anime or something. Yeah, right. It, it does sound uh, rather animated, but yeah, it's like it's called the Great Wagon. I don't. I just get this sense of I, I am interested as a as a literary reader uh, for you, like what your action. But like, I just get this sense of warmness, like washing over me reading the beginning of the peddler scene like just like the pots clanging and brands <laughs> excited and you know like like i just like oh like it's like i'm in front of a hearth fire feeling feeling the warmth of it just this like soothing we're in this you know like thought out fleshed out grounded you know alternate world and we're gonna get to see what it's like to have a peddler come to town and i don't know it just it did you get any of that sensation as a reader at all, or is it just like <laughs> no? You know, I I don't know. I wasn't as taken with this first paragraph. I will say. I mean, there's no. You see, there's no highlighting on it, and I was just like, okay, this, this dude's here. The wheels taller than any of the people. Um, right. really struck me. I feel like that sentence kind of hit me a little because of the the modifier. It's mm. wheels taller than any of the people with their eyes fastened to the peddler. It kind of, yeah. gosh, this is what I, I think I do in our writing group and I annoy the heck out of the other people in it. <laughs> so it's kind of saying the wheels are taller than the people with their eyes on it, not right. necessarily just taller than people in general. I'm like, why is it important that it's taller than the people looking? at him <laughs> do you see what i mean like grammatically that modifier is kind of weird yeah no no i do i do it is um a sentence you could definitely pause on um yeah. I, I feel like you know again it I've, personally i've gone through so many i feel like stages of being a reader slash writer that you know in younger years i would just you know wouldn't even notice that stuff be like wheels are tall that's crazy um but but here you know you just kind of 
as a younger reader or maybe someone who hasn't done as much or doesn't know about the grammatical side of things, I feel like you just sort of put it together. Yeah. Um, but, but I do also hear that if grammar is awkward, that can lead to awkward reading, even if you don't know about grammar, right? Um, so I, I will say, yeah, this could definitely be a sentence to sort of pause. And I think I was just so taken with the idea of wheels taller than people. It didn't matter <laughs> what else, what else the sentence said, like, yeah, eyes, whatever, peddler, sure. Um, but look at these huge wheels. And so that's, that's what like, I'm imagining in my head. That's nice. I can kind of see you as like a kid reading this uh, with this like enthusiasm of like a, a monster truck rally or something. <laughs> look at those giant wheels. Uh, that, that, that actually does sound kind of amazing. Um, <laughs> but, but I think part of the reason I brought up that beginning is I think this kind of speaks to, you know, why someone is potentially drawn to read fantasy um, or, or even certain other types of genre fiction uh, versus maybe not, um, because it, there is some sort of joy in me that I derive just from being in a new place. And, and I'm someone that does love traveling, for instance, and I feel like this this often goes hand in hand, not, not always. Um, but... And so I, I do wonder just how much, how much that matters for someone, you know, reading a book like this and fully enjoying it. You know, af after this chapter, because we're going to be now three chapters in, I'm going to, you know, ask you some questions about, you know, as a literary person, if you'd be, be reading this, just to sort of preview uh, what, what's to come. Um, but I, I do wonder how much of kind of that sensation being there or not as a reader does matter for people actually reading a book like this. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, that might, that... That is something that, like, I, as a reader, have never really been, like, the, a big draw to me as what I'm looking for um, right. in what I'm, what I'm reading. And maybe that's why I've never been drawn to fantasy and haven't read much fantasy, because that, getting that sort of kick from that is, mm -hmm. uh, is maybe what draws you in and keeps you going through... Right. Um, and propels you into the rest right yeah. whereas I you know I kind of want to know you know what the protagonist central problem is as soon as sure. as soon as I can you know and like mm -hmm. I mean I I do get some sort of hints about what Rand's problems are like I said the thing I'm more taken by right now is egg and then mm -hmm you know maybe man in black but man in black is this kind of like vague thing in my mind that we're gonna have to obviously deal with on our big quest but like as far as what Rand's conflict is in his mm -hmm. life like the only conflict i have from him right now is i like egg but i i'm scared to talk to egg right right and, and like and that's so that my bag that's what i'm like yeah. interested in you know totally and I, I do wonder how much that is driving like how long that could perpetuate you know this story for you and, and obviously in this chapter we we get to see her so there's gonna be a yeah. lot to talk about there but yeah you know just uh, the sheer joy i experienced just starting to read this chapter um i just noticed when i was doing it, even as a reread even though i've read this book you know many times um and so i, I did want to bring that up so no well, interesting I also wonder if that's why, like, I mean, drawing parallel to this and, of course, Fellowship of the Ring or whatever, if that's part of why so many of these stories kind of start off, I'm on the outskirts of this fantasy world, you know, I, the protagonist, I'm on the outside right. of this fantasy right. world, I, I don't actually, it super mirrors, and even here, I was about to say, you must have really gotten off on, like, all of uh this stuff about the war and the you know who's fighting say, whom. Talking about. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that stuff i mean i can just see you this is this is where your endorphins oh. are really firing right here oh, um, absolutely absolutely but that's um, but i'm onto something here right because like these stories mm -hmm. are it's supposed to mirror what the reader also likes. The reader wants to be like, I am also not privy to this world. And then I right. want to like go in and, and have to explore this world. And like Ooh. both Fellowship of the Rings and this feels very similar where you like have this very insular society mm -hmm. initially. So insular. Right. I don't think I mentioned this before, but in like the first chapter, we talked about how like nobody's even been 
murdered here before in this whole town. I was like, really? Like in the whole history of this town? Like nobody, nope. nobody's ever killed anybody? Um, nope. But okay, sure. And like then I think in this chapter, the mayor's like, he, he like mouths the word war or something and is like, that's the weirdest word to say. War, what? It, what? It would never, we know nothing of war. I'm like, come on guys, come on. You're not, nope. <laughs> you're not that know. sheltered. Um, but that seems like the gambit of the whole thing it's like oh this is this is what people are reading for they want to be the outsider coming in and so i'll literally set the story as the outsider coming in or whatever well and that's what also makes it more manageable to write you know that's why so many fantasy stories are this where you are in some like kind of small sheltered city town whatever uh and then the person leaves the town and gets to experience the rest of the world, right? right. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that more with like all these things that the peddler is talking about. But we get the same sort of idea in portal fantasy, right? So portal fantasy is where you've got a person living in the regular world, and then they step through a portal, like, you know, Narnia, uh, and then suddenly they're in, um, or I should say the wardrobe, and then suddenly they're in an alternate world, uh, you know, Narnia, and then we learn about that. So That's you know, funny. When you said portal fantasy, you want to know the first thing that popped in my mind? <laughs> What did you think of? The old uh, Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? Because weren't they like in an amusement oh, yeah. park or something? Yeah, exactly. The the cartoon intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They go to an amusement <laughs> park, they get on a ride, um, and then they're they're transported. To I don't even know why that was the first thing that popped. I guess because we're talking about fantasy and you said mm-hmm. portal fantasy. Mm-hmm. And like, I hadn't cool. thought about that show in <laughs> probably 15 years, 20 years. And like, you, should, you should rewatch the intro. It's pretty great. Um <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm a huge nerd, so I will literally listen to like 80s and 90s uh, cartoon intros, like just on YouTube, like when I'm doing work and stuff. Totally, man. Um, yeah, so like I I know that well. like I maybe I saw it a week ago, like at the longest. I have to so, go back. Somebody made a compilation of themes. What's your amazing. What's your favorite uh, 80s um, cartoon oh, theme? There's just too many awesome ones. I mean, Gummy Bears is like just incredible. I mean, Gummy Bears is, is a great song. Gummy Bears solid gold i'm gonna Um, plant my flag though uh with bionic six i'm gonna gonna say right here now that's the same mask is another one that's like pretty epic um (laughs) but but yeah that's gonna be a whole side conversation but yeah so portal fantasy is um this idea of you're living in the regular world and then you go to another world and there's tons of stories other in that way because again it's an e i I hesitate to use the word easier, but having written a fair number of things, I, I truly do think uh, it is easier. Uh, it's hard to write any story. Okay, I'll put that out. But I do think it, it makes it less complicated if you are able to show something, somebody in kind of a standard living situation, and then they're introduced to this fantasy world because then they've got all the exact same questions you do as a reader. Um, and it's the same idea here that Rand assuming he leaves Evans Field, is going to have, because we see how sheltered he is, he's going to have all the same questions we do about, you know, the rest of the world. So these are very, like, common uh, literary devices that that are used to accomplish this idea. So I like here how the peddler um, starts saying his news. Um, Mm -hmm. And and I do like in this chapter, like, these, you kind of see it, like, right here on this uh, page of, like, uh, just voices from the crowd yelling out. I always love yeah, that yeah. in a movie too. I think like my favorite lines are the ones that are like the anonymous voice from the crowd right. that like yells out a, a funny line at some point. But that's what this kind of reminded me of. And I mm-hmm. like how like people like kind of hate both of right. the kind of forces. <laughs> like like we hate the dragon and we hate the dark one. <laughs> Yep. Like, we hate both of these jerks who destroyed the world or broke the world or whatever. Right, and uh, right. I thought that was pretty cute. And, and like, yeah, real realistic. You'd be like, okay, maybe he's the good guy, but he still broke the world, so screw him. Right, so right. I like that. Exactly. I, this is one of the parts I want to ask you about. One was the, the name dropping that's happening, right? Because sure. he's like, you know, all the way from the Blight to the South and the... You know, Aerith Ocean to the Ale Waste and stuff like that. IE West and then Borderlands, you know, so there's all these places uh, mm. that are talked about, right? Um, and so, you know, again, as as a fantasy reader, um, <laughs> so this is my question to you. Were you instantly going to the map 
and looking where the grape light was. Absolutely not. A (laughs) hundred percent. Not at all. And again, like, just like we were talking about before, if I was writing that, I would totally just, (laughs) just throw out some names and then we'd go, uh, the, the, the map guy will take care of it later. It'll, it'll be fine. The the map guy will get it. it. Yeah. So this, this again is just another potential moment of of like (laughs) the the, the difference, right? Um, And that, you know, we're, we're kind of getting, these implicit promises that we will we will learn more about these places or we will go to these places or, mm-hmm. or we'll learn about these people. Um, and again, you know, by by having that map and, and by seeing like, you know, where things are, uh, if, if you do choose uh, to take a look at it, um, that, that is, again, I think a very fantasy reader thing. Like, I mean, there's whole forums just about maps for and like map making yeah. for fantasy worlds um, because people love maps. Of fantasy worlds. Um, so again, them. I think this is just a potential, you know, kind of kind of difference. It gets in, its own spot um, in the like table that. of contents, even. Yeah, exactly. It's there. It's there, waiting for you to see <laughs> it. So you can you can take a look now. I I do wonder how much you can enlarge it <laughs> as uh, uh, can I uh, on this type of reading device. Oh no, that did not work. Yeah. I don't think I can zoom. Sadly. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, obviously, readers who have the book can, can take a look at it. But I, you can even see on the left there of the, well, the map on the left, on the left of that is the Earth Ocean. Mm. Um, so you see that in pretty big print. Um, but yeah, kind of reading the rest is, is kind of a little oh, tricky. Yeah, they mentioned but you this can, place. you can see where these, where these places are, right. um, which, which is kind of neat. So, so again, you know, the, we get this sense of the two rivers being very isolated. And then you get this person coming in talking about these, you know, things that are happening. And we can literally look and be like, oh, yeah, th- that's where these things are. And so, again, that's just another potential um, way to kind of be involved and continue to peel back the mysteries of this world. But, it, but it's a very different reading style, as we talked about before, you know, this yeah. stopping and starting to look at maps, to look at symbols, to look at epigraphs. Um, it is different. It is, it is Dang, different. They even really seem to be, like, right in, like, the dead center of this shit right here that's where they are oh, right the, um you I mean wouldn't... in terms of where the the two rivers are yeah the two rivers are uh good job catching it but yeah they're they're right there uh, in between like uh well uh Barillon and uh Emmons Field. So you can see the Emmons Field right there and so yeah they, they are kind of in in the middle by by these mountains of mess um but that does sort of keep them blocked off from stuff i mean don't get me wrong Barillon is isn't that far away but then you can even see where Galdean is. So when they're talking about the war. Um, Wait, so where is that? Uh, Galdean is just to the south. Of oh, that. okay. Yeah, so it kind of makes sense that we're hearing about oh, a gosh. war that's from there because that is relatively close to that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, all right, all right. And so you can even, you can discover that and, and then suddenly be more in the, the character says, being like, oh, wow, I see why they're worried and it's close, you know? So not only is it this concern of you know the dragon broke the world before and stuff like that uh but also this more immediate potential threat of war coming to their doorstep all right i wanted to mention uh this little like mm-hmm. also kind of classic 80s right. teen comedy movie uh <laughs> moment where where he yells out and everybody else is suddenly quiet uh right, right. but i even kind of liked even without that in this line i kind of like that it's implied that yeah um Perrin is still bugging him without right. saying Perrin is like I'll explain later. So Perrin must have said something in between this line and then when he says later yeah. I said, you know, but you don't get it. He just says later I said you ha- you have to cut a supply. Oh, Perrin mm-hmm. must have still been bugging him about this. Right. Precisely. Precisely. And that's what I again, you know, I'm not saying all fiction needs to be this way, but I think sort of the work that you got to do as a, as a reader is, is a good thing in some ways. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really like the style of that as well. Um, so we talked about the places and the names, and then I just want to get into, um, as you mentioned, you know, all the people kind of shouting stuff out, and the fact that there doesn't seem to be agreement, right? Uh, where some people are, you know, well, in this part that we're currently on the, these pages, I think there is pretty much agreement that people seem to hate everybody, right? Um, but then later they're talking about, you know, um, this sort of false versus not and like what's okay to to kind of talk about and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, you know, so I, I think there, 
what I liked about it is it shows that it's not just there's this singular monolithic viewpoint that everyone has, that everyone's just like, we know X, Y, Z, the dark one is evil, the dragon reborn is evil, like Zoda's over the right. It's like there seems to be some like debate, you know what I mean, of what's going on, especially when we get the information about like uh, Matt talking about the guard and stuff like that. Um, so I, I think it's cool that this chapter introduces different perspectives on these kind of big events. Right and on. about the dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, though, I think that the descriptions for Pat and Vayner are, are really well done with the the intro, because we get we get Rand gives some information about how Pat and Vayne likes being the center of attention and kind of like has friends, but not really, and that he's not going to be happy that there's actually a Gleeman in town. And then we see him behaving sort of like we would imagine a Gleeman behaving, like putting on a show, even, even though it's terrible, right? Like it's he's giving these people this awful news and just like almost ramping them up, right? Oh, right. Yeah. And saying, well, he can channel. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, we get this feel oh, of like, jerk. Is, is he a good, he doesn't seem like a good guy, right? No. Um, but, but I think the way this is set up, it's character driven, which is, which is cool. Um, you know, we're, we're learning these terrible things about the world and that's going to matter for the plot and everything. But we're also getting to see Patton's fame's character throughout it. Um, especially with the way you mark that line there. Oh yeah. And here's, I, I mentioned, I love these like anonymous um, exclamations yeah. from people, but this one was definitely my favorite one because it <laughs> seems like completely like the towny, just complaining, just right. kvetching here. No mm -hmm. dragon reborn for 20 whole years. And then here three in the last five. <laughs> Evil times. Look at the weather. <laughs> Look That's at the so weather. <laughs> So it's, I feel, yeah, and I mean, I agree, number one. And then two, I think it's just this awesome, great way that he gets to provide us information, right? <laughs> it feels totally, again, in character that someone would be complaining and shouting, just said, like, the townie that's complaining. But then we get to learn, oh, wow, okay, so this is like a thing, this happens, um, and now it's happened more regularly. And so it, it just continues to escalate this idea that times are getting worse. Um, and they're seeing kind of the barest ripple effects of it. Um, in the two rivers, isolated like they are, but that the world is kind of going into this upheaval. And so I'm supposed to get these fake dragons. These are just nut bars who, like, decide, like, somebody, like, proclaiming themselves to be Jesus or something. It's just, like, somebody yeah. mm -hmm. crazy who's, like, going, like, oh, I'm going to try and convince everyone I'm the dragon. And then exactly. they're just, like, a crazy person or whatever. Right, right. And so that's when it becomes interesting when everyone starts yelling at Sen when he when he starts to act as if maybe it's real. Because then they also talk about the uh, the idea that once the real dragon's there, like everyone dies. It's like the harbinger of doom. Um so uh I, I think that's a really interesting moment because now I got this question of like, oh, is the is this person who is now claim currently claiming to be the dragon reborn the real one? Is the is the end of the world nigh that you know that these people are now worried about? Right on, right on. Um, so a little um, gender stuff here. Only mm -hmm. women can touch the right. one power, Ewan right. says. I was waiting for this line. I was waiting. Yeah. So I, I assume yeah. that's going to come back later and be important. And there are, like, like you were kind of saying, I, I'm definitely picking up on, like, this separation, this, like, kind of male-female theme, you know, keeps coming right coming back well and the reason that i that i wanted to touch on this line is when it says in the stories men who channel the power always go mad mm -hmm. and then they waste away and die right? right or even before that he'll go mad and die and so this is where potentially again depending on what type of reader you are you might be madly flipping back uh to the prologue at this point going wait a second um is that why Luz theron was acting crazy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, I definitely, um, I definitely picked up on, yeah. on, on that. Um, and then there's language around that that talks about the taint. Um, uh, and I'm talking the prologue, mm -hmm. um, where the bad guys like talking about the taint that's on the power. And then we like got that uh, the dark one's counterstroke, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying that we, I'm not saying we know for sure at this stage. Um, but I'm just saying, like, I know there was a question before of, like, what is the, the Dark One's counterstroke? Was it the Dark One killing Luz Theron's family, right? Mm -hmm. um, or not? But we, we can start to be getting more hints of, like, okay, wait, is, is this 
why is this why Lucerne was crazy? Right. Is it that crazy? Did the Dark One make this happen? You know what I mean? So there, there's just some stuff going on there with this line. Right on. There's some. Uh, there's some other good uh, mm. random words. Wait, I don't have them highlighted somewhere. Well, here's where the Who and Tad came back yeah, before, Tad, and right? I was like, wait, <laughs> like, like, Who, who and Tad? Guys? Why, why are they? Why are they stabling? Things? Who are you? Um, yeah. Oh, but there's something that happens where Sen. I feel like Sen does mm. like an about face here, where like he's the first one going wait, we don't know that this is a real dragon or not. Let the peddler talk. And then I feel like the peddler said, well, I don't know if it is, but he can wield the one power. And then, like, immediately, like, Sen, like, uh, seems to be on board that this is, like, the one dragon. Um. Oh, no, that, that he's not. It's bad enough to have Fane here talking about false dragons mm -hmm. using the power. So, like... Why is he just like immediately jumping to that conclusion? I don't know. It seemed it seemed like interesting that he seems to like make up his mind immediately about this. Yeah, no, I, I was uh, interested to talk about this part because yeah, we can tell that he. I mean, we've seen before that people don't like what he's saying because it it sounds like he's bringing bad luck on them, and I think that part makes a lot of sense because he mm. acts like maybe it's the real dragon, and people are like, "You shut your face." Like, don't, don't you put that out in the world because if it's a real dragon, we're all screwed, right? right. Um, so I think that, like, you didn't, you know, bring that part up. So I think that part was clear. But then, yeah, on this part, um, there's something that Sen doesn't like. And, and I do think it is a little it's tougher to see exactly what it is. Um, but here, he's saying what shouldn't be talked about is the Aes Sedai. Um, but I totally get what you mean that it could sound like he's referring to the dragons or even that he then has made his mind up about that this one is a false dragon. Right. Um, but it's sort of, it's not said explicitly, so we don't really know if he does or not, right? Um, but I, I do hear your reader confusion on that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I, I just like Tam's line here that he's never saw or heard <laughs> or smelled anything that yep. couldn't be talked about. I, I don't agree, bro. I think, I think I've smelled some things <laughs> nope, that nothing. should not be talked about. So I'm calling, I'm calling false yeah. on that one. All right. Um, let's see. So where I was, mean, it's, oh, I was just going to say real quick that uh, Jordan does use Sen bringing up the Aes Sedai and not liking them as a narrative device to then allow uh, Fane to say Aes Sedai are already in it. Uh, and then talk about them going right. um, to this place. Right, right, right. So I do, I do think that's like, it is important that that's being brought up because then that can already start to lead to some other questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, again, these, yeah, I don't know if those are like ca capturing my imagination enough, like that I should be like, mm. I said, I, again, I'm just imagining um, they're just warriors or, or a group of people or you know yeah i don't know man <laughs> it's such a weird uh word to ice to die well i feel like if you could go back to it real quick um that particular page to see if there's some right so we do get some indication uh, that um since he can wield the power and none but i said i can defeat him um so i hear you that we don't get a ton of what but we did learn that um i guess there's no one but i said i can defeat him that's interesting. yeah i was seeing if there was any other descriptors might have been don't... earlier i don't know yeah no no i guess not i mean well we've got Owen saying that only women can touch it right mm -hmm. um and then we've got no one can like face this false dragon who can channel except i said i so we don't fully know what's going on there but we could potentially make some extrapolations wait um, so okay so see this is i just need i'm glad we're doing this together because i clearly just need you to, to point out <laughs> these things to me. so am i supposed to believe now i said that i are women potentially yeah i mean gotcha. you could you could be making that leap right if if he's channeling men go mad it's rare that people like proclaim themselves a dragon or they can oh, channel. Oh, okay. So this is why, yeah, this is why I need you, Jeff, because I highlighted this line 
Right. You know what you know kind of women he's talking, talking about. about? I'm like, no, I don't. I don't know what kind of women he's talking about. <laughs> Sam, tell me. <laughs> tell me what kind of women he's talking about. <laughs> I feel like this is becoming less lit versus genre, more of like explaining <laughs> how fantasy works. Please. Which is good. Which is Please. good. Uh, uh, I will say, though, like, um, I think it's okay, right? Like, you don't have right. to know. Uh, what it is i'll know it's eventually that, right yeah it will show yeah, up you will eventually moment. but the power like what's cool is you can go back and see where it's being hinted at because again like it's the difference between info dumps right like we're getting a lot of info here but it's not necessarily the exact info that just says what's happening right mm-hmm. um and that's because he's talking around it you know right. kind of as people who already know it would right and so we're getting these like little hints um of it but but not fully and i think i just i personally i I like that a great deal because it sounds more realistic as opposed to someone just being like info dumb it's there and you got to kind of work for it and then when you finally learn it or if you knew it ahead of time if you're like i think i said i might be women who can channel and then later you find out they are they're like yeah i got it and it's like this this little win uh, that you get so again like how we were talking before about you know me personally feeling just this you know, wave of joy and even reading about a peddler coming to town. Um, th- this is something else. It's like, you know, why, why do you read a story or what is it that captures your interest as a reader? And for me, getting these hints that I can then uncover about world building, not about like a mystery whodunit, but just like about the world and then figuring out I'm right or figuring out the answer. That is very satisfying to me as a reader. Right on, right on. Yeah, no, I feel that. I feel that. (laughs) I will say, interestingly, not not to diverge too much, but I do, I still read a good bit of fantasy. Um, I I mainly read a lot of my writing group because there's a lot of submissions um, and there's a lot of fantasy there. But I do, at times, uh, find it hard to find a new book that will thoroughly capture my imagination. I am, as you and I do this, uh, I'm starting to wonder how much of it is this. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like this has been so revealing to me to have to like sit down and, and talk about, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking. Um, and it's a joy to do, honestly, to, to uncover these things. But as we discuss it, I do wonder if a lot of fantasy I read is just more on the nose that they do just give you this info. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this, you gotta, you gotta work. Right, um, right, right. I think I, miss, I think I missed that. I think I missed that mental exercise that this kind of writing puts you through. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's interesting to think back. I mean, you've read it multiple times and I've never read it before. If you can even like fully put yourself back into the first time, you know, can you like even remember when you're reading this, not knowing who the Aes Sedai are, you know, like it's, it's a, I don't know. It's an interesting exercise to try and to try and do. Well, I think this just also goes to prove (laughs) <laughs> give proof for why I love this book so much because I do think the clues are there. Right? Mm-hmm. It would be one thing like true, like I, I can't fully disconnect my bias, right? My knowledge. But the fact we can go back through and find these little words, right? And, mm-hmm. and I'm not going so far as to say like we should know at this point as a new reader that I said I are this thing. But to find that there are some clues, that mm-hmm. there is something we could potentially put together. Yeah. And again, not not to talk about ravens too much but i feel like ravens does it just gives you it it just like tells you these things um whereas in this like you gotta be like maybe and then we're like well i guess i'll find out or maybe it is and then we keep reading for the rest of the story and and is that like about changing times in just when he was writing you know is it about what you know if there if he did hear some complaints from hapless (laughs) readers like myself you know (laughs) who didn't get some of the stuff i don't know it's it's interesting to theorize about so i'll I'll be interested when we go back and read that um just want to note on this page the council kind of jerks right oh this is a little authoritarian here like why do they have to like talk to him in secret i'm kind of with all the villagers here to be like hey what, what the hell what the hell man that's messed up okay so they do that um and i think more than anything it's just like okay we we need to keep some stuff from the kids um mm-hmm. as well narratively so this allows us to lock the kids out and allows 
Nave to finally arrive. <laughs> um, Before we get into that, because that is a big deal, I just want to touch on two quick things. Yeah. So I've been looking back through, and, and you're right, when, when Sen says, you know what kind of woman he's talking about, right? Uh-huh. That, uh, that pronoun is huge, right? For us to figure out, like, who's the he, uh-huh. yeah? Um, and in the previous... I thought it was got, Ewan, right? Right, it's referring to Ewan, right? Yeah. And so Ewan, like, what women would he be talking about? Uh, when he brings up this idea of uh, only women can touch it, right? right? So he's indicating that there's a kind of woman, the woman who can touch it, right? Um, and then say, so there's there's no point about talking, bringing eyes to die into it. And notice he says, a fool of a boy bringing eyes to die into it. So right, this is the brilliance to me of, of Jordan in this. Robert Jordan is saying to us, the reader, hey, eyes to die are women that can channel and they're the only ones that can because men go crazy right um it, it's it's there for us but it's happening within this broken conversation like and by broken i mean like it's broken apart i threw out you know ewan saying this thing sen reacting brand reacting to sen sen reacting again um and then it's getting almost almost clarification from pat and fane talking about that they're the only ones that can handle it we're like well what type of person can handle someone can channel I suppose someone else. And we go back and we see it. So right there, Robert Jordan has given us Aes Sedai are the ones that can do magic, they're women. Um, I mean, that's cool, man. Yeah. But like, yeah. I'd have to be like IQ 160 or something <laughs> to have put this together. <laughs> like, I'm already juggling that these words, like even the words themselves, mm-hmm. Aes Sedai, mm-hmm. which I have to like be kind of thinking in my mind is like a, a group of people and, and I mean, that's all in there and I got that, but that, like you're juggling all these things and then yeah. he, does he really want me to be connecting these dots like in real time about that, what that's what that is? I mean, I'm, I'm sure he does and I'm sure there'll be commenters who said like Steve's a, a, an idiot <laughs> and, and just couldn't read this through, but I'm like, that is... That is like something for the reread to me. I don't. I don't know. Like, if on my first try through, I ever would have been, or maybe like I'm not going through with that fine tooth comb. Like, that's the thing. I'm not like every word. I'm gonna trace back because that that's that's a little bit not what I read for. Like, I want to be reading for the flow and for the sentences. I don't want to be stopped. Exactly. Partway exactly. Through so, and go back. Like I, that's yeah. that's not how I like to read. You know. Right. And so that uh, I'm, I'm getting excited because I think that this also shows one of the big potential disconnects between like lit versus this very specific style of genre, which is like you know dense uh, fantasy reading or relatively dense uh, compared to some other novels. But um, exactly because. For this, when we use the word read, right? What does read mean? How do people read? Um, if you were listening to this in audiobook, it would be a pain. You'd be like, oh my goodness, wait, okay, right. rewind 30 seconds. Like, what is this, right? Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people who do just read straight through, right? Because um, they don't want to kind of break their immersion or something yeah. like that, um, which I get. Or, or because what they're interested in is how do the sentences flow? How do they connect to each other, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what excites you potentially as a reader and a writer. Um, or you just said it did. Um, you don't want to do those things. So I think it works on, on well, it, it works and it doesn't. So it works on two potential levels. One is you don't have to know. But like, you just know that, okay, mm-hmm. there's these Aes Sedai things that are being sent up to the dragon. I, I don't know what that is. I'll find out maybe someday, right? And you keep reading. Um, or if you are the type of person that that likes these little hidden mysteries and it, it doesn't break your immersion to go back, reading to me for this type of story is going back, like stopping and then bouncing back. A couple a couple pages mm-hmm. or about bouncing back a couple paragraphs and that creates further immersion for me into the world because I'm I'm getting more in their heads and understanding what they're talking about. But I totally get that for others it would break their immersion. So yeah, I think there's a very distinct reason why some people could like this and others not, because to a certain degree it requires a different way of reading, at least to to get all these little pieces we're finding. Yeah, man. That's super interesting. That's super interesting. Right? 
Isn't that like fascinating? This, <laughs> this potential disconnect of like why some people read this and are like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like just just no. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, I, I don't know enough about the character conflicts. Where is Egwene? I don't. <laughs> where is the light? You know, I said, I just tell me what's happening with these lovebirds, right? Um, whereas me, I'm over here like, <laughs> like finding like all these little hidden mysteries. Be like, this is perfection. Why aren't all books this way? Um, so not not that all books should be the same. That would be boring. But um, um, fascinating stuff, fascinating stuff. So glad we're doing this. So glad. Anyway, <laughs> please, continue. All right. So when the name shows up, just to kind of, because this is a long video, we, we still got to talk about Eggman. <laughs> okay. I like Dark Friends. Right. There you go. There so, you go. But let's talk about this capitalized word here, Dark Friends. Yeah, yeah. So I, what kind of threw me here is, okay, the word friend Right. You think of like two people in a friendship, right? right? So we've just said, I hope the Aes Sedai and this dragon, false or not, stay where they are. Do you mm -hmm. think they're really dark friends? So right. <laughs> I guess I knew in my mind that Aes Sedai was just a group of people and not like a person. But like, right. <laughs> it right. to me oh, like that okay. okay. Hey, are Aes Sedai and dragon like going out? Like, you right. know, are right. they? <laughs> I was like, okay, that's weird. That's funny. I've got something different to to say for that. I just I think for multiple books, read it as dark fiends constantly. Like my brain did not want to make it dark friends <laughs> because that just seemed like too. I don't know. It just didn't work for me. I was like, no, no. It means it's dark fiends. Obviously, like they're dark fiends. Um, the so dark like it sounds too me. like after school special or something. Like, <laughs> like I, I literally couldn't make my brain see it as dark friends <laughs> until I think years later. Um, and it was just this really like weird thing my brain did. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it's super real. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. I, I want to say that Pat and Fame does say a group. Of I said I go out, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I love your interpretation. Yeah, I just also <laughs> went there too fast. Dragon. I just thought I, I just saw him like you know, yeah. you know, sharing uh, friendship bracelets or something. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love right it. There. <laughs> and then also the exclamation light. I don't right. think we had right. heard this before. Uh, or... That's in the prologue. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so well, I know he talks on... about like touching the light. Or whatever. It, it does, but um, Lou Theron, when he's calling up to the sky, uh, says, light, forgive me, Right. I want to say. Um, I, can, I can check that. Oh, so he wasn't literally talking to the light. Like, light, forgive me. He was saying yeah, light, well, as in, like, dang. It kind of, yeah. Like, it, it's more, as we'll see more i mean because you can see like above like children of the light yeah. was mentioned yeah um we see the light kind of representing good you know what i mean especially because we've got the dark one right, right. dark ones is being evil so, so you've got just this collecting them here them. right like like matt says not all stories say they serve the dark one rand and then mm -hmm. rand says no you're wrong about dark one you mean light light caused um, the breaking it's it's more, it's like a swear, really. It is a swear. So this, okay, so I am yeah, reading so this, all right. Okay, this is like another uh, interesting thing in, in fantasy novels, right? It is normal for the fantasy writer to try to figure out how can they swear without swearing. Sure, sure. Um, and we do even get that later with uh, when Matt says like, what do you say, blood and stone or blood and ashes, mm -hmm. um, and the is like language, Matt. Um, but yeah, so that that's what light is. I don't know if there was some other. Harpen, I actually own a t-shirt uh, that's got all of, like, what? like, all of his swears that he does. Yeah, it's ah. like, you light-blinded fool, and, like, you wool-headed sheep herder. And so, like, that's amazing, because he's got, you, even in this, you can see Nanae do do a couple of them, of swearing. Yeah, light, light is sort of one of them, but it's also quasi-religious, because... Right, that see, that's a tough one, because when you say he said that in the prologue, I was definitely not reading that as, like, just a... A generic yeah. exclamation when he said light forgive me i thought he was like literally he saying hey me. light forgive me because light's like i don't know yeah. goodness or or something right like that. exactly i don't think you'd fully know right I, I think you'd still be thinking maybe it does mean like yeah. goodness but you'd still swear like even though god means this good force right people swear to god right you right. know um so yeah i think you would you wouldn't fully know right 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 uh okay here's the name finally 
There it is. Shows there up. Is. You may be old enough to be married. How old are they? I don't <laughs> I was waiting know. For that. I was waiting for like, tell me. Tell me how old you are. <laughs> never. You will never get enough. <laughs> and then uh, Egg shows up. Mm. Um, but like, so here's mm-hmm. here's one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna say okay. about Rand here. I I am kind of getting a little worn thin by Rand's just egg issues. You know, <laughs> like so this line here. Um, but whenever Egwin gave him that intent look with her eyes as wide as they would go, as if every ounce of her attention was on him, he could not seem to make the words go where he wanted. I I like that. Make the words go where he wanted is a nice way of saying what, you know, writers have to come up with a new phrase for that, like hundreds of millions of times. And and somehow he came up with one that is simple, but I never feel like I've never heard before. Okay. But then he says, perhaps he could get away as soon as Nene finished. But he knew he would not, even if he did not understand why. You understand why, bro. Like, you dig the chick. Like, I don't, I don't, like, really buy this, like, oh, I don't know why I'm gonna stick around even though she makes me uncomfortable. The reason she makes you uncomfortable is because you dig her. And you know this perfectly well. And I do not believe your, like, sort of <laughs> denial I mean, act I mean, here. I hear you. I mean, I think there's a, going for, obviously, the naivete of... You know, you you like being around someone um, without understanding why. And and when we're when you immediately have this conversation, it, it made me think of uh, Sky, actually my wife, um, that we were roommates before. And there was uh, one day when I was like at home, uh, you know, and it was around the time that she would normally get off. And I was like, oh, you know, hopefully, you know, Sky should be getting home soon, you know, and like, and uh, we can we can watch a movie or something, you know. And and then it it struck me. I was like, oh my god, I'm in love. <laughs> why, why, why? Yeah, I was like, why, why am I so excited for her to be at home? And then I was like, oh my goodness, I really like her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I, I do hear you that, you know, for us uh, as the outsider watching this kid fumble around about this girl. Um, and I, I do get that in, in, in some relationships, we are hyper aware of, you know, what we, what we like or don't like. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying I, I completely disagree with your statement here, but I do think there is something to be said for what what Jordan's attempting to capture this notion of I feel something, but I don't really know what it is. I have this sensation when I'm around you that I don't really like, but also don't dislike, or I'm not sure what it is, but I still want to have it, even though I don't understand it. And so I think that's like what he's going for. That's funny. I have always been acutely aware (laughs) of which girls I am into and when um but yeah i i feel it makes me think of like uh i was trying to think this happens in movies a lot where like the character is suddenly like oh i've loved this person all along and didn't realize it i think it's jane austen's fault with pride and prejudice basically you know like (laughs) elizabeth just didn't realize that she i mean in that book she does a good job of making uh what's his name seem kind of awful the whole book until the end. end, but <laughs> but there is that that is a classic moment. You're right of like yeah, so I mean, many. It is. I feel like it does happen more often that other way where it's like you know a female character and there's this guy who's kind of like awful to her or whatever, right? Um, and then he has like this moment of like like you know nice, <laughs> like he's nice for this this right. moment. He does something kind, and then it's like wait, actually maybe maybe he could be okay. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, the, I think it can have both directions, of course. Um, but I do also agree it's, it's not something that happens a ton. It can, it can feel just something that happens in stories, but is it, but is it real? Um, but personally, that's, that's my, my take on it. Yeah. I mean, just, there's just another line of it. We just hit a lot of it. There was not, mm. that was not what he had meant to say. He did, he did want to dance with her, but at the same time, he wanted nothing so little as the uncomfortable way he was sure to feel while he was with her, the way he felt right then. <laughs> I'm just getting like, I'm just getting exasperated with the dude now at this point, which maybe I'm supposed to. I wonder supposed how to much be. of this is that we're in chapter three before you're getting this, right? Mm-hmm. Like if your main interest as the reader is, okay, talk to me about Rand and Egg, right? 
Um, and we got to wait and wait. You're like, okay, okay. I met, Mar- I met the townspeople. I met the council. I met Moraine. I met the peddler. Hey, it's finally here. Oh, yeah, and especially this here. one. Come on. Somehow it had never occurred to him that she would reach marriageable age at the same time he did. What? I do oh, not she, she, believe you. I do not. Oh. A, how old are you, bro? How old are you? B, I don't believe that never would have occurred to you at any point. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do concede that using extreme language is 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 a slippery slope because it's hard to truly believe that. Um, but to, to my point, just real quick, I do wonder if he would have been this exasperated if we had seen these scenes like sooner um, and he wasn't sure, or, or if this would, it could happen at any point and you would kind of never believe that someone doesn't fully know how they feel, right? Or, or doesn't, or is, isn't this unaware, right? Um, in terms of like why he wouldn't think that, it is because she's two years younger than mm. he is. Mm. And so it, it does seem like in the society that there is a certain age that you become marriageable. Um, and that women are allowed to sort of braid their hair when they become uh, that age. Right. But the women's circle has an impact on when you get to make that decision. Um, I will say there's a lot in Ravens about that as well. So I, I do wonder, you know, how much of that was in response to people being like, what, what is this? Um, but but I, in this chapter, it does talk about how Rand thinks that like being two years older should let him have some sort of, you know, uh, not not power, but authority uh, sort of over uh, Egwene, but that doesn't work at all. Mm-hmm. And that he doesn't feel like, you know, older in that moment. Yeah. So. And I'm getting some of this like classic romantic comedy mm-hmm. uh, back and forth mm-hmm. where like clearly Egg likes him. She wants him to say, hey, right. you know, you right. like me. Oh, you're not going to say that? Well, I guess I'm going to run away and become a nun. Or so, you know, like basically is what she's saying here. <laughs> like, I'm going to go to another town somewhere else. And he's like, oh, but I don't want that. It, it all, it does feel very like, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, when Harry met Sally or something so, somehow. Um, no, for sure. For sure. That they're like, you know, they both got, the conversation doesn't go well, right? right. You know, they're each trying to show they've got their own perspective on like what they want, but then they're trying to come together. So yeah, I mean, I I was curious to hear after all the buildup, did the scene work for you with Nene, with, um, with the game? I mean, I like that there's, there's an obstacle between them, but I, I do feel like it is that, that romantic comedy thing where you got to keep them apart. And mm-hmm. the reason they're being kept apart doesn't feel completely earned to me. Like the the reason they're keeping them apart is because somebody's not saying how they really feel. But why? And like, mm-hmm. what Jordan's trying to sell me here on is that that Rand doesn't know his own thoughts or feelings well enough. That everything's a mystery right. to himself. That his right. own motivations, like, why do I feel so awkward around her? Why do I want to be here but not be here at the same time? And that doesn't really work for me. I, I don't I don't believe that characters are just mysteries to themselves that much. Um, I think they sometimes do things that surprise themselves, you know, and that's often works like really well in a story where somebody does something that they, they wouldn't have thought they would have done otherwise. Mm -hmm. But as far Mm -hmm. as like, Oh, you know, I, I don't realize I like you. I don't know. I have trouble with it, but I mean, yeah, I, Maybe that's maybe that's just something I, I that I haven't wonder, experienced in my own know, life, and that's why I'm having trouble with it. But I would have liked some other like kind of bigger reason. I even would accept like the, you know, just I I, I like somebody so much I'm awkward I fall over myself and I say something mm-hmm. dumb because right. I like her so much and I realize I like her so much, you know, um, as yeah. like what's kind of keeping them apart right now i feel like that's what jordan's doing again more with the the actions than the words yeah right so you got Rand being like almost like we were talking with moraine right that you know it's not that in Rand's head he's thinking about how gorgeous she is over and over or 
you know, how we'd love to kiss her or something like that, right? Um, it's more just that he's stumbling over himself, you know, with a coin, you know, um, all willing to do what she wants, that sort of thing. And we see that sort of same idea happening here. I mean, obviously, there's more internal dialogue about him being confused about his feelings. Um, but it's more shown again that, you know, he can't say the right thing, that he wants her around but doesn't want to say that he wants to be with her because he doesn't know if he wants to be with her and stuff like that. Kind of like the awkward teenage thing. So, again, I would say this is why some people label this as more a, you know, YA story because if you're reading about two, I don't know, 14-year-olds or something, 15-year-olds, right. maybe 13-year-olds, maybe, maybe this being unsure, like, I've got this feeling, but I don't really know what it means. Like, before girls were icky, but now I want to be near you, and I don't know why. Like, I, I do think those moments happen, um, but maybe the age uh, feels yeah. unrealistic. Like, wouldn't he have already had a couple girlfriends? Like, wouldn't he, you know, if, if he's eight, let's say he's 18, right? Um, would he have, you know, kissed a girl in the hayloft or, you know, <laughs> you know stuff like this? And, and we're not getting any of that. There's no comparison to another love he's had in his life or information that, you know, he's been so sequestered on the farm that he never gets to see girls or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's a couple of factors that are, would probably make it hard for a more modern reader because we don't know his exact age. And then he's behaving in this way where he doesn't know his own emotions. And that is the, the primary thing that's causing difficulty between them. So from a kind of romantic structuring standpoint, it does it's not giving you a lot to work with well, as a reader, I, if, that's, if I, that's your interest. I think if it was clear what he wants, then mm, even mm. these lines right here, right. which is a great little moment, but would work better. Because if I can read him saying, you know, th this, th this line, of course I have, I daydream sometimes, but I know the difference between daydream and what's real. And of course she gets offended at this, mm. but I, this, I feel like is just his like, real self talking that's just his real opinion if right. if i knew in his head he's like oh i'm crazy about this girl mm. um and then she says i'm leaving and then he says this because what he really wants is for her not to leave like he knows that's what he really wants mm. he's like i'm gonna say this because i do not want this girl to leave but then it has the exact opposite effect of what i want like it's stronger in that way and i mean mm. and i know we hear this a lot in all sorts of like you know writing seminars and workshops and stuff make it clear what the character wants and i think this is why because if i if i am getting in all these chapters up till now oh man i'm crazy about this chick but i don't know how to talk talk to her i, I think maybe mm. she thinks i'm a, a weirdo and a nerd and like i don't know how to do this and then he says Oh, you know, it, it's stupid to go somewhere else. And he's saying mm. it because he wants her to stay. She, of course, takes it. Oh, you're calling me stupid. Then that's like, I think it kind of pops a little bit more. What if he doesn't actually like her, though? What if he doesn't? Well, then I'm putting down this book. This is, I'm, I'm done with this thing. I'm setting it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just putting out there you know we we've sort of been talking about this with the assumption that you know he does like her yeah and i'm just saying there is also the possibility that they've grown up together they've known each other for a while as you get older you start feeling perhaps potentially awkward um around the opposite sex or around someone you like um and so it is feasible that he's just going through that you know what i mean um, and so that, that could be why he's not sure. He's not sure if he really likes her or not. Because but is maybe, that maybe he does, maybe he does. Is that compelling to be not sure whether he right. really likes her or not? I mean, it's definitely possible. It's, it's a reading that right. Jordan is offering us right. here, but is that as compelling? And then is this scene as compelling if, if he doesn't, if he maybe does, maybe mm -hmm. doesn't. And I think that's why, you know, this, this isn't, I know that's what you said you were interested in reading, but if we look at what we've received so far, that doesn't seem to be the main focus of the book. Like this is a main, sort of a side thing. Um, and the main focus is about like this impending doom that's coming, this apocalypse that happened before. Um, and these people that are interested in boys his age, you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, maybe this love interest uh, will be a story uh, or maybe not. Um, so, you know, I, like I think- how you're being spoiler free here. I will yeah. be shocked. 
and appalled, I must say. <laughs> this doesn't, like, play out so much. I don't need them to get together, but, like, there's got to be. Come on. There's got to be more going on here between them. Are they going to get, like, saying, hooked up at the marriage was... ceremony and then he doesn't want it or something like that? That could be fun. So, I mean, I, it is interesting to talk about, though. Like, okay, if you've got two characters that you're putting together as a potential love interest, but he's kind of awkward around it and unsure – um because you're you're right it, it's not like he's going from the angle everybody wants me to marry Egwene, but i don't like her right right that, that would be another clear perspective right. right um he is literally choosing the i don't know <laughs> like right. i don't know how i feel about her um and, and could that be more explicit right that like he's had a friend who fell in love with a girl and it was totally obvious for him and then he had another girl who had come up to him that he didn't like and he just can't decide which he feels about Egwene. Mm -hmm. So I think that if there maybe was some more specificity, um, then that, that could push this particular angle. Um, but maybe right now it just feels like another thing you're being denied. Right. right? And, and it feels like maybe there's no reason that you're being denied it. Um, and, and I could see that being frustrating. Like if we're already being denied, like how does this world work? What do these worlds mean? I don't, I don't know this stuff and I can't even know how the character feels about the love interest. Is there anything I can know in this book? <laughs> um, like I, I could get that, that feel. Right. Um, so maybe if there was a bit more rationale for, for why he feels this way, like he's tried, um, but he can't figure it out. Like she's still an enigma to him. And for yeah. some reason, um, may, maybe that could have helped. One thing I do know, Perrin <laughs> is joining the squad. Welcome in, yep. Perrin. Woo -woo. You yeah. are you got the on the team, bro. <laughs> well, we're in this case, you know, got, got seen by the uh, uh, guy, which means part of the crew. Yep. Part of the crew, part of the crew. And then uh, we uh, wrap it. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Egwin yells at Rand one more time, and, and Rand kind of stands up to her and is like, well, look, mm -hmm. I saw what I saw. I'm not taking mm. it back. <laughs> right. And, uh, and then who I, I mean, it's the Glee Man, right? The next chapter is called the Glee Man, right? This guy. Well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's literally chapter and, it, and it's got a little picture of a heart. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, uh, yet again, making, making the promise. So we, we did get a Gwen, maybe not the way we expected. Right. Um, and then, and then we're immediately bringing in someone new to take attention off. All right. And that will be, Next episode, so we'll see if this Gleeman really lives up to the hype so far. So I got, I got to ask a question, though. Yeah. Something I said that I was going to ask early. How far would you have made it if you weren't reading this from it versus oh, No, I keep reading from here. I mean, like I said, that, that yeah. prologue is wild enough with enough yeah. energy to it. Not so much that, like, I want all the questions answered. Again, that's the, it's the, I think the biggest difference between you and me, and maybe between mm -hmm. two different types of readers for this, is that I, I'm not really here going like, oh, I want to find out what this uh, war was, or or who the, mm -hmm. the I even forget their names already, I, I spies, or whatever they are. Um, like, I'm not that i don't i don't want to read to find that stuff out but i was propelled by the energy of that prologue and how mm -hmm. kind of big and crazy that was and kind of and that's the promise for me that things will get right. kind of that big and crazy again um at mm -hmm. some point in mm -hmm. this adventure so i think i would definitely keep reading I gotta okay. say I'm dreading a little bit having to slug through this this festival or whatever. I kind of yeah. I kind of want them to get on the road to wherever they're going and, and get moving. Yeah, that's what I was you know? So if if your interest is seeing that that like kind of like endpoint that craziness, I am wondering how much of this you'll put up with, right? right? Like like how much of the the slower stuff, especially <clears throat> pardon me, especially when we're not getting. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Especially since we're not getting clear information about like Rand and Egwene's relationship um, or some other things you might be wondering. So yeah, this, this will just be something I check in with because you mentioned, for instance, that you know uh, you you didn't make it. I, I, wait, did you read the entirety of the first uh, Game of Thrones book? Did you read? Yeah, I read the whole thing, thing of the first Game of Thrones. Oh, you did read the whole thing, but you didn't make it all the way through Mistborn, right? Yeah, you I didn't make it all the way through Mistborn. So, yeah. so I am just wondering, like, how long? How long will that energy of the prologue? carry you yeah. right um and obviously we're gonna do the whole thing because that's, that's the point I've of signed these, on. These videos I've, I've signed my life but, away we're doing it 
but I want you to be really, really honest about like when you would kind of be taking a break or, or, or not, because yeah. I think that that is going to be a really fascinating conversation uh, from a lit for genre perspective. Right on, man. Right on. Sounds right. good. Well, no, and, I'm, and this also helps that we we're going to like put it under the microscope and, and, and talk about yeah, it too. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of jazzed just to read it for that, but I will let you know <laughs> if my, if my energies my fantasy energies start to flag <laughs> at all. Cool, here. cool. Because I, I, like I said, I just think that's an important talking point. I realize you're having to read sort of with two minds in order to be able to do that. Because yeah, on the one way, it's exciting to put it on the microscope and talk about it, and, and that creates its own energy, right? Um, but if but if you can divorce yourself some from that and be like, mm, I think this is where it's gone a bit too long for me, <laughs> you know, like that type of thing. Right on. Well, hopefully not the next chapter. Hopefully not the next chapter. <laughs> we got the Gleeman. What are you I talking know. about? B- no, big man. hype. A big hype. And, uh, uh, and thanks, everybody. For... And oh, sorry. <laughs> I was saying gleam and hype. Gleam and hype. Gleam and hype. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And, uh, yeah, we will be back very soon to dive in to uh, the gleam Gleeman chapter four. We'll see you then, everybody.